приветствую на нашей встрече. Рада вас видеть. Напишите, пожалуйста, в чат, слышно ли меня или и видно. Поставьте, пожалуйста, плюсики. Пока нет плюсиков. О, есть плюсики. Отлично. Значит, меня слышно и видно. Супер. Давайте знакомиться. Напишите, пожалуйста, в чат, из какого вы города. Очень интересно узнать нашу географию. Москва, Москва. Так, кто у нас здесь еще есть? Барнаул, столица мира, Рига, Воронеж, Лос-Анджелес, Уфа, отлично, Копенгаген, Саратов, Химки. Супер, ребят, классно. Всех приветствую. Нижний Новгород, отлично, классно. Ноябрьск, супер. Классно, ребят, давайте познакомимся. Меня зовут Ольга, я руководитель дистанционного обучения школы киноиндустрии. Сегодня я буду модератором встречи «Полное погружение в роль техника Майзнера» с Брайаном Маллиганом. Сразу хочу поднять несколько технических моментов. Прошу вас соблюдать онлайн-этикет, выключите, пожалуйста, микрофон чтобы не перебивать, не отвлекать спикера, и включите свое видео, потому что в любом случае нам приятнее видеть ваши лица, а не пустые окошки. Если у вас будут возникать вопросы в процессе, пишите их обязательно в чате. Я постараюсь на все получить ответы Брайана в конце нашей встречи. Просмотр трансляции возможен синхронным переводчиком или на языке оригинала. Для этого посмотрите, пожалуйста, вам нужно внизу на панели нажать на иконку маленького глобуса и выбрать канал «Русский» — это синхронным переводом на русский язык, английский синхрон ну, с, с английским, а выключенный — это без перевода, если вы хорошо знаете язык, вы услышите его Брайана в оригинале. Поменять ваш выбор можно в любой момент, по, про, про, вы сможете протестировать эту штуку. А, вот. Так, ну, наверное, мы можем потихонечку начинать. А, я думаю, что вы все знакомы с нашей школой, так или иначе, но я в любом случае скажу слов для, слов, пару слов для тех, кто не успел еще познакомиться с нашей школой. Наша школа кино и телевидение индустрии это совместный проект режиссера Федора Бондарчука и продюсеров кинокомпании «Водород» Михаила Врубеля и Александра Андрющенко при поддержке национальной медиагруппы. Миссия школы – это развитие принципиально нового поколения кинематографистов, и в рамках глобального международного сотрудничества с ведущими практиками мировой индустрии. Год назад мы уже проводили такой цикл встреч с международными спикерами, чтобы поделиться со всеми желающими опытом зарубежных коллег. А сейчас мы запустили программы, авторами и спикерами которых являются востребованные практики мирового кинематографа, принимавшие участие в создании всемирно известных шедевров кино. И как раз в рамках презентации вот этой программы мы проводим сегодняшнюю встречу. Итак, наш гость Брайан Маллиган, он практикующий педагог по актерскому искусству, лауреат Университета штата Калифорния за выдающиеся достижения в творческой деятельности, более 35 лет проработавший в киноиндустрии США и Канады. Он обучался искусству импровизации, актерскому мастерству и технике Майснера лично у Кита Джонстона, Уты Хайген и Уильяма Эспера. В настоящее время он является одним из ведущих специалистов Голливуда по техникам актерского мастерства Сенфорда Майснера и Уты Хайген, а также обучению импровизации по системе Кита Джонстона. Его ученики – это звезды всемирно известных фильмов и телесериалов, в том числе Кейт Хадсон, Зои де Шанель, Саймон Хелберг, Джек Куэйт, Денис Чун и так далее. Вот. Ну, вроде я представила Брайана. Брайан, здравствуйте, передаю вам слово. Thank you so much. It's uh, good to be with you all uh, across the ocean. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning here in Los Angeles, and it's a very, very chilly uh, 15 degrees Celsius. I'm very, I'm, and so I, I hope it's warmer where you are, uh, at least inside. Um, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have about uh, the Meisner technique, about the workshop that I'm going to teach uh, over that eight-week period. Uh, and 
uh, I'm very interested to hear what you're curious about and, and to meet you. So um, I'm ready to answer your questions now. Anything you want to know right off the top, Olga, what can I do to, to set this up? No. <laughs> Uh, да, спасибо, Брайан. Ну, давайте, uh, давай начнем тогда с главного вопроса. Uh, что, это, что из себя вообще представляет техника Майзнера и в чем ее главное преимущество? Чем она отличается от других техник? Расскажи, пожалуйста. Yeah, so Sanford Meisner was um, a member of what was called the group theater in the United States in the 1930s. Uh, he and Lee Strasberg and uh, many other uh, young artists at the time were very influenced by the work of Stanislavski, by the touring production of The Seagull from the Osco Moscow Art Theater um, in the 1920s. There were some uh, teachers from that company who stayed in New York and uh, began to teach. Um, so they took the principles of the Stanislavski system as it existed in the 1920s and began a theater company that was based on, on the work of Stanislavski, um, which in, in short is realism, is psychological realism. So the, the impact of that production, that international production of, of Chekhov's The Seal was people went to the theater and were astounded that actors appeared to be normal human beings walking around on stage. They weren't, you know, speaking and gesticulating in a in a wooden or um artificial manner which was the the way that acting was the the that was the technique of acting very external very exclamatory almost like opera might be today um and so they began this company sanford meiser was a young member of it and um they had success uh, on broadway in new york um, doing plays that were politically minded and sort of the, the socialist thinking. Uh, it was during the, de the Depression in the United States, the Great Depression in the world. Uh, after a time, the group theater could not stay together. Um, artistic differences and financial um, issues, the, the group theater um, had to sh shut down operations after 10 glorious years. Um, out of that group theater came several uh, teachers of note, and uh, Stella Adler was one, Sanford Meiser was another, Lee Strasberg was another. Meisner and Stella Adler went to visit Stanislavski in Paris in 1935, and they spent months with him talking, and he had changed his approach um, to the work um, or in the 10 years that had uh, had intervened and he was now working more with the actor's imagination than with the actor's uh, emotional or psychological memory. So that appealed to Meisner and to Stella Adler. They came back to, to the United States. They told everyone, this is what uh, the great Stanislavski is doing now. We think we have to adjust our training. Um, and that caused a split. Lee Strasberg decided, no, I want to do it the old way. That suits me. Uh, Meisner and Adler went their own way and, and they did um, a work that was more based on the actor's imagination. Uh, Meisner um, uh, then began teaching in, for, in Los Angeles and then back in New York. And he devised an exercise called repetition, uh, to, in, which is the beginning beginning of what's, what's known as the two-year Meisner training. Um, and the repetition exercise, you may have heard of it, um, it frees the actor from having to uh, improvise to think up words. All you have to do is repeat what you hear, what your partner says, and immediately engages you with your partner. Um, in order to repeat what your partner uh, is saying to you, you have to listen the way an actor listens. Since you can't miss a syllable. You have to say exactly what it is that you hear. Um, and it also uh, it inspires um, an, a connection and, and emotional things come up during the repetition exercise. It's, it's improvisational, but it has a structure. It's fun. Uh, you don't have to, you don't, you're not thinking about yourself. You're putting your entire attention on your partner. 
Um, and this is how the Meisner technique, the, the teaching of the Meisner technique begins. There's of course much more to it than that um, over the two years, uh, the two years which I did uh, later in my career uh, as a student. Um, you're then dealing with uh, physical activity, you're dealing with more improvisation. Of course, you have text work, you, have, you, you apply the, the lessons of the Meisner technique to scenes from plays. And then it's, it's um, gradually over time that um, repetition exercises starts to sound more and more like uh, conversation um, with, and less like repetition. Um, so that by the end, you, you can't really tell that they're repeating. Uh, and yet the technique is still there. The listening is still there. The, the uh, energy going toward your partner and receiving what you get from your partner, that's still there. So um, that is the Meisner technique in five minutes or less. Uh, advantages, what are its advantages? I'm not sure. Uh, exactly how to answer that, because there's no one technique that is right for everyone. And it's, it's in, in my experience as a student of acting, I've had to um, go to different teachers to, because of who I am and, and the kind of actor that I am, the kind of person that I am, how I think, um, how I feel, how I move, uh, I need input from, from other, from different uh, techniques. They're all going in the same direction, which is psychological realism. Um, but for example, I studied with Uta Hagen for years and that I was swore by that technique and by that approach, and I still do. Um, but I knew that there was something in the Hagen approach to acting um, that wasn't lighting a fire in me emotionally. Um, and it was no fault of the technique. It was just, I was thinking too much. It made me, I was thinking too much because of who I am. When I did the Meisner work, I was, I became very free emotionally uh, for the first time and very consistently able to, to tap into emotions. Um, and so that was an, that became an advantage. Yes, I правильно понимаю, что именно поэтому, простите, пожалуйста, что я перебила, что именно поэтому эта техника стала настолько популярной вообще в Голливуде. Правда? Поэтому? Um, yes, I, I would say, uh, and it's not necessarily popular with everyone, but, but there is um, something that works for the, the, the film actor in particular, um, because the camera is very close to you. Um, you're, you can't really get caught acting. You know, if you're, you're doing too much with your face, you're doing too much. If you're working too hard to get your objective, if you know the term, the acting term, um, it's, it, it, it's too big for the camera. Um, there's so, so much, uh, uh, listening is so important on the stage or on film. <laughs> Um, but the, the Meisner technique for, asks you, it forces you to listen in such a particular way um, that, and with ease uh, and with simplicity that it suits the, mm -hmm. the, technique, the techniques required for film acting. So in my opinion, that, that, that is why it is popular among some, if not all, um, Hollywood film actors. Uh -huh. Спасибо. То есть я правильно понимаю, что техника Майзнера больше подходит да, киноактерам, но есть ли какое-то отличие в технике, если все-таки актеры играют в театре? И если они есть, то какие, какие отличия? И можно ли вообще применять в театре? О, oh, абсолютно, yes. uh, uh, Майзнер был в театре. Um, he, um, I don't, he, he didn't make a distinction, um, between, uh, film and, and theater acting himself. Um, he was teaching acting technique, period. Apply it to whatever medium that you're going to, to work in. Um, 
uh, he himself was an actor uh, in the company, in the group theater. And um, you may know that he was in a, a terrible car accident in, uh, I can't remember exactly when, um, when he was in his middle age, I suppose, and he lost his voice. And uh, so he had to use a voice box and, uh, and a particular method of speaking. But he can, occasionally he would still be cast in, in, on television and, and film. And, you know, he was, he was using his technique, presumably, <laughs> um, but um, no, there was no distinction for him. Um, is there a difference? Yes, here's the difference in my point of view. I've never taken an acting for camera class. Maybe I should have, but, but uh, it hasn't, it prevented me from getting work uh, on television and film. Um, my take on it was uh, I would learn what I needed to learn on the set but in the practice of the work. I suppose it's not a bad idea to practice that in a class that offers um, uh, that kind of training um, and certainly at this school. Uh, so, so if you have the opportunity and the advantage and the teachers who know what they're doing and have worked on in sets, by all means, take it. Um, because the more prepared you are on the day you walk onto set, the better, especially if you're playing a role, you know, if you're not playing the, the lead character, um, time is money, as they say, and they cast you, they want you to do the job that you did in the audition and they wanna move on because it costs a lot of, they're paying a lot of people <laughs> to make the television show or the film. So yes, you should come in prepared, absolutely. In terms of your acting technique, um, mm -hmm. uh, very simply, I think you just need to modulate it to the size of the lens and to know where the camera is, where the, you know, when you're in close up, when you're in the two shot, when you're in the master shot. Um, and that takes practice. And if you can practice in a class and know how to do that when you walk onto a set, uh, you'll be ahead of everybody else, perhaps me. You'll be ahead of me. I learned on the job. Um, people continued to hire me. So, to, so I guess I, I, I learned quickly enough. Um, in terms of the psychological work, it's the same. The inner work, it's the same. It's just the size of the performance is what is different. Я поняла. Хорошо, спасибо большое. А вот вы заговорили о том, что если ты выходишь на площадку, у тебя не главная роль, то ты обязательно должен выложиться да, на полную мощь. А расскажите, пожалуйста, какие вообще шансы у начинающего иностранного актера пройти кастинг в Голливуде? И, может быть, есть ли какие-то универсальные правила или лайфхаки, которых стоит придерживаться? Life hacks, yes, uh, yes, there is, but I can't tell you. It's <laughs> no, there isn't uh, obviously one uh, shortcut. I think one of the answers is: is there a shortcut? No, there's there's um, the there's no shortcut. It's practice, practice, practice. There's a joke. I don't know if it'll work across uh, you know the languages here, but. Um, if there's a, you know, a young um, a performer comes to New York City, gets off the, out of the subway and asks a New Yorker, you know, how do I get to Carnegie Hall, uh, which is a famous music house in, in New York City. And the, and the person says, practice, practice, practice. So um, yes, it's all practice. And it is, uh, if you're trying to get your foot in the door of the business, um, the Hollywood business that get the attention of casting directors and directors and producers, and this has got to be true where you're working as well. And I know that there's a you know vibrant uh, uh, film uh, industry right where you are. Uh, and so why come to Hollywood when you've got great films? Yes, very vibrant. So. Um, why, why come to Hollywood um, when you can just do, do the work that you want to do at home? Um, I, I think that I would, I would think that the same um, principles apply. You have to be professional 
you have to show up on time to your audition. You have to know your material. You have to be trained. Um, you have to be pleasant. Uh, no one wants to work with a person who is difficult. Um, despite the stories you may hear about uh, certain Hollywood actors being uh, difficult, um, it, it is a business. And, and this, this quick and dirty that I'm talking about is that they, they count on you, just like they count on the person who's putting the light, you know, focusing the light. Everyone does their job uh, and we make a product together. Um, and so, you're, you, so you should check your ego at the door, check your um, problems at the door, uh, come in and act like a professional. Um, and you will get hired again because people will, uh, like to be around people who are pleasant. Um, and then within that, of course, you have ambition to, um, I don't know what your ambitions are, but if you do it for the love of the work, uh, because it certainly doesn't pay all the bills for most actors, I, I would say 2% or so of the actors in the Screen Actors Guild are making a, a living wage. They can live off what they're earning strictly from acting work and the rest are hoping. So um, you have to do it for, for the love of the craft. Um, and that's my advice. That's my answer to your question. I can probably answer different ways, but that's my take on it. Хорошо, спасибо. А как избавиться от вообще от этого чувства дискомфорта и эмоционального зажима, когда вот ты на сцене или на съемочной площадке, ну вот условно в первый раз или первые какие-то разы или даже э, какой-то супер известный э, артист, у которого там много ролей, все равно каждый раз выходя на новый на новую площадку, на новый фильм, все равно волнуется. Uh, I think if you're not nervous, um, it's, it's actually working against you. I think that the fact that you're nervous is a good sign. It means that you care. It means that you have high standards for yourself um, and you want to excel. Now, if anxiety and stress are overwhelming and they prevent you from doing your work rather than fuel your work, um, then uh, there's a couple of things. One, um, if you don't have acting training, get it. Um, you need a foundation, you need technique, number one. Number two, you should take care of yourself in your life, your mental health, your physical health, do all the things that make you a whole human being. Um, uh, that the, those are important. They're, they last a lifetime. I continue to work on myself still. Um, there are good days and bad days, good weeks, good months, good years, um, and years that are more challenging. It all it makes us human and makes us grow. So if you are overwhelmed by nerves and stress, then get some help, um, get some support. Um, any kind you want. If it's uh, if you take comfort in in your faith or uh, religion, great. If you take comfort in with a psychologist, or you take comfort with a group of friends, a supportive group of friends, um, do that with your family. Do that. Find balance in your life so that not everything rides on the audition or the day you show up to work. It's a part of your whole life. So take care of yourself, be healthy. Hope that answers your question. Хорошо. Спасибо большое. И еще такой вопрос. Каких вообще сложностей стоит ожидать в профессии актера? К чему нужно быть готовым в первую очередь начинающим актером? Huh. Difficulties. Could you be more specific about the question? It's for a beginning actor. Ну да, если вы начинающий актер, вообще, ну как это, 
Что будет тебя ждать? Что тебе может помешать? Что тебя может испугать? Вообще, что за сложности могут ожидать тебя в профессии? Окей. Terrific. I think first I want to say that your journey as a uh, an, a new actor, regardless of how old you are when you begin, there are some people that start their careers and their if they've done other things in their life and then they they decide I want to be an actor and they're at 50 or 60. Um, but for for a young person, I think there's something really important about not knowing everything and being and having passion and your own ideas um, that you can't get back after you've lived a while and maybe life has been a little hard on you. Um, uh, or that you've, you've, there are some actors who find a great deal of success early on and they're not ready for the, the things that come with that, for all the money that comes with it, for all the attention that comes with it. So first I would say that what you don't know is um, it's probably good to be ignorant about certain things uh, and just innocent and committed and driven um, by what you want to accomplish. Um, now, would I have benefited from knowing certain things ahead of time? Um, yes, probably. Uh, there's one piece of advice that I got that I'd wish I'd gotten uh, as a younger actor. And that comes to auditioning. And, and I, I've never felt like a very strong Отлично. auditioning. Это очень популярный вопрос в чате и вообще в принципе. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure. Sure. Well, here it is. Here's, here's my wisdom, right? Um, but it was handed to me. Um, when you audition, don't go in to uh, win the part to get the role. Go in to win the room to make fans of the people who are decision makers, who, are, who will call you again, um, the casting director, uh, the, the producer, the, the, the assistant to the casting director, the person who's like getting coffee for everyone. You never know. <laughs> Those people are in the industry as well. And one day they're going to be directing a major film and they'll remember your audition. You know, they will. If you uh, show up to win the room, if you win the part, there's too much. Um, if you're trying to win the part because you have to pay your rent or you need to get your medical insurance or, um, you know, there's going to be too much tension in your, in your performance, very possibly. Um, and the nerves are going to overwhelm you. you you're, you're, you're going for the wrong thing if you're trying to win the part. If you get the part, that's great. But if they, even better, that everyone in that room remembers you, you may not be right for the part. There's someone who's two inches taller, their hair is darker or curlier. Those things you can't control, but you can control your preparation and, and the work that you do in the room. Uh, you want to win fans so that those people will call you again and they'll, they'll, they want to include you uh, in their work. Um, it, it, there was a television show that I auditioned for, I think five, maybe six times before I finally got the part. But I knew I had a fan, the casting director and the, and the, the show runners. Um, I would see them over and over. It's like, hi, it's Brian again. You know, here we go. And, and they were actually, I could tell that the casting director was really looking to find something that would fit me and that I would fit. And, and it was really fun and it was great experience to the more I came in the more relaxed I was because I didn't have to prove anything um, I just had to do my work and and eventually I got a part had a great time and and so that's my advice that's one piece of advice for a new actor я поняла спасибо большое это действительно очень важно у нас тут в чате есть вопрос, который на самом деле действительно очень важен. Брайан, скажите, пожалуйста, на ваш взгляд, эффективно ли обучение актерскому мастерству онлайн? На ваш взгляд. Uh, 
Uh, it's a thing now. And is it, there are, um, there are <laughs> advanced, there are some things that you can do uh, from your home that you can't do in the studio. There is some um, vulnerability, some, something that comes out of being in the place that you're safe, you, presuming that you feel safe in your environment uh, and um, truly at home um, that do, don't exist when you come into the, into the studio or the classroom that really benefit the work. Um, so yeah, it's a thing and I think it's always going to be a thing. I think teachers are understanding and I think actors are understanding it. Um, yes, it's also convenient. I mean, here we are 10 time zones apart and, and we can come together and, and explore this, this, this work together, talk about acting, do the exercises. Um, that's an advantage. Um, People, you know, if you wanted to study with a great teacher, I had to move to New York. I was living in Vancouver, Canada. That's where I was born and raised, where I started my, where I got my original uh, acting training and began my acting career. So I had to move to New York. There was no alternative. Um, of course, I wouldn't change that. I'm glad I did. It, 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 it opened my eyes to the world and, and living in that city, um, uh, you know, really helped me grow up and mature. Um, so that I wouldn't recommend that you just stay where you are if you have ambition to, to see other parts of the world and, and go, you should go, it's a combination, I think. Um, and when the pandemic becomes endemic, I think that we'll have more choices, that's all. Um, then we'll all wanna go back to the room, but here's this resource that we have now where we can um, also participate in work um, online. So yes, I think it's a thing and will remain a thing. Ну, классно. Мы тоже так считаем. <laughs> так что мы абсолютно согласны, что good, это good. совершенно новые возможности. Как... Сравнительно с тем, что было раньше, действительно можно буквально рукой дотронуться <laughs> до Лос-Анджелеса. <laughs> yes. Да, спасибо большое, Брайан. А, давайте, может быть, тогда вы расскажете сейчас коротко о программе, которую вы будете вести, а после тогда мы уже перейдем sure. к вопросам из чата. Хорошо? Yes, so the program is, we have eight weeks, we have 16 meetings, um, and so I'm, I'm tailoring the, the introduction to Meisner tech week, technique um, to that limited period of time. Um, I understand that we want to cover as much ground as we can. Um, the, the whole training typically lasts two years. So we would be meeting twice a week for three hours uh, for 10 months and we take the summer off and we do another 10 months. That's the whole training. Um, uh, in in to, uh, one of the questions, the pre-questions that came along was how long does it take to master it? Well, if you've ever spoken, master the Meisner technique, if you've ever read any uh, or spoken to anyone about what mastery is, it's 10,000 hours. Um, it's practice, more practice, more refinement, more practice. Well, we don't have 10,000 hours. Um, we don't have two years. We have the time that we do. So um, what I've devised is a program that uh, dives immediately into um, the repetition exercise. Um, it's something that the more you can practice, you'll have an acting partner um, who you can meet online outside of class. The more you practice with that partner, uh, the, the more you'll advance in the work when we meet twice a week. Um, so we'll begin at the beginning. Um, we'll begin as beginners. Um, uh, we'll um, 
I will invite you to, no matter how much or little your experience, to um, to have beginners a beginner's mind to it, um, because you will get more out of it um, if you leave what you know behind and and come in um, with fresh ears and eyes. Um, we'll do the we'll do the. I will accelerate the work a little bit um, so that we cover. Um, the uh, the next the second phase of the Meisner technique is something called the independent activity. Um, I will have people working on that. That's something you can devise on your own at home. Then you bring to class. I'll give you um, uh, specific instructions about how to, how to craft uh, an independent activity. And again, you'll always be working with a partner, improvisationally. Um, and then. Um, uh, my ambition is to have you deal with some text, some um, scenes from plays, film, television, and I might, I, I, I have a, a several things in my file that I can assign to people, they would have to be translated, or you can bring work to me, um, something that you are working on, if you have a scene, a favorite scene, um, we can use that. And so that we have a little taste of applying the, the technique um, to text work because ultimately that's what we're doing. It's not an improvisation. We are expected to learn lines and to, and to create character and, and so on. So that's the scope of it. Uh, you know, um, it, it's a mistake to um, go faster than um, is appropriate. So you're not gonna get the whole two years uh, of Meisner training in eight weeks, but what you will get is a, 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 a solid foundation in it, a clear understanding of what the whole technique is. And then if it's something that interests you and you wanna to continue to work on, you um, find a program um, that where you can do it more uh, and do it for longer. Um, that's that's true of anything, and and it might you might you might learn by the end of the eight weeks. Well, eh, it's not for me, you know. It, I, I learned a few things, great, but I, um, that that's enough, and that that's good too. You know, you learn what what's again. Not every technique is is um, has all the answers. Not one technique has all the answers. So, um, but of course, my my wish is that you. You have something practical that you can use um, the next time you have a, a scene to play, a role to play, uh, an audition to, to go. Um, when I was training in the Meisner work, I was working as well. I was auditioning. And in, in LA, I had just gotten here from New York. And um, uh, it was no accident that I started to do better in my auditions. I started to have more success, more callbacks. I, I won the room. <laughs> I got work. Uh, it's not a um, accident. Me too. Извините. That's fine. I that was enthusiastic. <laughs> А, хорошо, Брайан, спасибо большое. А вот скажите, пожалуйста, а сколько часов в день примерно нужно уделять а, занятиям, ну, в самостоятельном или в паре? Um, so the more you, the more you work, uh, the better. I, I, I will um, give you some uh, homework to do. It will be um, uh, in the beginning, it'll just be meeting with your partner and continuing the repetition exercise as you've learned it up to that point. And so that will be, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day. Um, just make an appointment, uh, work with your partner. That's it. Um, when we, we get to the independent activity, that's something that you will, however long it takes you to to um, invent one and um, and to gather the materials that you need, the physical objects that you need uh, to do the activity. 
um, that's how long that will take. That's unpredictable. You might have everything. You might have a great idea and all the objects that you need, and in five minutes you're 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 prepared. Um, uh, then when we get to text work, um, then there'll be time to learn lines, uh, to practice. I'll give you a particular way to practice um, the, the learning of the lines that you may not have done before. And so that will take longer. So um, yes, yeah, so the more that you uh, put into it, the more you'll get out of it. Uh, I remember when I first started doing this technique, um, uh, it was a, actually, it was a, a program similar to this. It was an accelerated program. We met three times a week. It was six weeks. It was in the summer. And I was immersed in the work because I was doing it so frequently. When, if I wasn't in class, on my days off, I was meeting my partner um, in person. We would go to each other's apartment and, and do the uh, repetition exercise. and. Um, I found that the immer the total immersion um, was it, it started I, it started to affect my dreams. It really sort of impacted me in a strong way. Um, and then I also realized that uh, it was bleeding into my personal life. So so my my girlfriend is now my wife. Um, she, I'd, we'd be making dinner together and. I would start repeating what she said <laughs> unconsciously. I was like sending back, I was doing the exercise without realizing I was doing the exercise. Um, so yeah, um, uh, I, it, it won't be, you can still, if you have a job, you can still do your job. If you have a family, you can still class. do your family. Um, but you'll want to, I, I think if you like the technique, you're going to want to keep do it a lot. So that's what I would tell you. Спасибо большое за такую маленькую личную историю. Это очень классно. А вы сказали про парное да занятие, по парную работу с партнером из группы. А скажите, пожалуйста, как она вообще будет выстроена? То есть вы будете назначать пару там какому-то студенту или ребята смогут сами выбрать себе парочку, а вдруг кто-то останется один? Вот как быть с этим? No one will be left out. Um, everyone will get to be picked for a team. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, the assignment of partners is, uh, for the repetition exercise, is, is, is pretty random. Um, we don't have to worry about geography. Uh, look, my apartment is on 75th Street and yours is on 72nd Street, so we should be partners, okay, if that's convenient, but we don't have to, we don't have that problem here. Um, unless, of course, some of you plan to meet in person, um, if you can do that safely. Um, so in the beginning, it will be pretty random. No one will be left out. Um, I, I will at some point, um, we'll see how it goes, um, but it, there will there'll be a time when after a, a few weeks, we might say, all right, let's shuffle it. Let's switch partners so that you have the opportunity um, to practice with a different human being in front of you because that, that really strongly affects the work. Um, uh, so you have those different experiences. Um, when it comes to uh, the assignment of the scene, uh, then uh, I'll be more particular about the casting um, finding something that is within, this is an American idiom, but within your wheelhouse, within your strength, what, in my opinion, getting to know you over the first several weeks, um, I will take my best shot at finding something that's in your comfort zone as an actor. Um, so uh, that will determine the, the role that you get and the partner that you get. So that's how that works. Ага, хорошо, спасибо большое. У нас тут в чате есть вопрос про упражнения. Вы можете хотя бы кратко как-то рассказать, что за упражнение стук в дверь? Oh, oh, someone's been reading. 
Very good. Okay. The knock on the door. Um, oh, great. I guess I wrote about it, didn't I? Okay. Um, I was wondering, where did you read that? Uh, uh, I do have a question for, for the group, um, but I'll answer this first. Um, the knock on the door. So, um, I think, you know, I, um, I'm going to demonstrate. You get a free, you free acting lesson here. Okay. <laughs> so, um, can you hear me if I do that? Can you hear that? Okay, so yeah. I'm going to leave the room and I'm going to knock on the door and I'm going to come in. <laughs> oh, yeah, Brian. I'm going to ask you to say to, to say this. Uh, you're going to say what kind of knock it is, okay, Olga? So it might be urgent, it might be angry, it might whatever occurs to you. Um, say what kind of knock that you hear, okay? It, wait for me to come to the screen. And say, that was a angry knock or whatever, okay? All right, so here we go. Я надеюсь, хватит знаний и словаря, чтобы описать. Давайте посмотрим. Нервный, мне кажется, такой настойчивый. I was nervous. And that was persistent and nervous. Да, кажется так. Okay, there it is. чате меня поддерживает Дмитрий. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll do one more. Okay. Uh, do we have a volunteer? A volunteer to? Olga, thank you. Perfect. Fantastic. Anyone want to? Uh, cautious. Good. Do we have another volunteer? So just raise your hand and, and turn on your camera. Alexandra. Okay. Good. So here we go. Извините, ребят. У нас в России, видимо, другой стук. <laughs> а, ребята пишут неуверенный, настороженный, робкий, нерешительный. Окей. Что касается Александра, что ты делаешь здесь? Александра Тук. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm muted myself. I think actually it was a little bit um, impatient and a little bit angry. And uh, yeah, annoyed. I agree, annoyed. Mm, annoyed. Okay. That's the knock. Knocking is a universal language. So, um, the important, thank you, Alexandra. So, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, how you respond to it uh, is how you respond to it. Other, it. It's actually not surprising that there were some differences of opinion. There is no one answer to it. It's how it impacts you emotionally. So if Alexandra says, that was, a, that was an angry knock, okay? And then in the repetition exercise, I say, that was an angry knock. And Alexandra says, that was an angry knock. And I say, yeah, that was an angry knock. And, we, and so it begins, right? Um, so that's the knock on the door. Uh, the knock on the door now, if I'm, if, if someone is doing, an, um, if Alexandra were trying to, to glue together a plate that she had accidentally broken, a plate that was her grandmother, um, was from her grandmother's um, um, 
fine china uh, that she was given as a wedding gift in uh, 1947 and she'd broken it accidentally. And her, her, her mother was coming for, for tea and she, she was trying to glue the plate together um, so that her mother wouldn't know that, that the, the plate had broken because she was so ashamed, if you follow. Um, and that was happening and I come to the door and I have this angry knock and Alexandra has this, this, uh, this task to fulfill that has a personal meaning to her and a certain uh, urgency, a certain limited amount of time for her to get that task done. Now we have an improvisation. She's got to get the thing done, but I come with an angry knock. And it just begins the scene at a more uh, uh, connected level. It doesn't begin from nothing. It begins from the knock is, is a, a springboard into, the, into emotion, I guess. Not necessarily emotion, but to, to, to immediate um, connection. So that's the knock on the door. Спасибо большое. <laughs> Это было очень наглядно. Sure. Uh, несмотря на то, что, может быть, я как-то не очень восприняла или действительно не услышала, но это было, правда, очень понятно. Спасибо большое. <laughs> uh, скажите, пожалуйста... Oh, you're fantastic. Скажите, пожалуйста, Брайан, а вот на этом курсе будут ли какие-то ваши авторские фишки, которых больше вообще нигде нет? Может быть, вы что-то тоже ну, придумали и припасли для наших yeah. студентов? Um, if there is, I couldn't tell you what it is. Um, of course... <laughs> There, I was trained a certain way, and I will tell you that um, there, um, oh, how can I put it? There was a... <laughs> no, yes or no? <laughs> okay, yes. Um, th there, uh, there was a... Um, th Meisner teachers in general, uh, the best ones had a reputation for being mean and confrontational, uh, angry, personal, uh, temperamental in general. Um, and that's what you'll get with me. No, uh, that, quite the opposite. Uh, that is not how I teach. <laughs> um, it does, it's not how I, who I am, it's not how I teach. Um, I, I don't see the value in tearing someone down in order to build them up. Um, and I, I like to have a good time. I like to, um, of course, I, I want um, you to advance in the work and to feel like you, you spent your time well. Um, I, it, it, the, work in, the best work invites vulnerability. And I just don't think that if you're afraid of the teacher, that's the best way to be vulnerable. Now, some people, it's, some of you may, you may prefer a teacher that is very tough on you, that is very uh, demanding. And, I, and the exercise itself demand, demands enough. If it's set up properly, if you understand it properly, the exercise, the work d is demanding enough. So um, the, my particular approach is based on who I am. That's all I can tell you. Um, the fact that I have other training and other experience uh, and have taught for a long time and I've taught all age ages and all levels of experience um and i love teaching i love it um i love seeing people you know get it and their the light bulb goes off i love to see slow progress i love everything about teaching um it's a privilege honestly um and i take it i approach it with humility and um with uh excitement about what's going to happen today based on the, the people in the room. So, and yes, uh, I studied Uta Hagen. I can't not, I can't pretend that I didn't. And there's value in that. I, I can tell you this, I was asked to teach a, a program for teaching 
teachers how to teach the Uta Hagen technique. Um, and I was invited by my mentor in the Hagen work, a, a fantastic teacher and act, uh, named Carol Rosenfeld, uh, who's still teaching going strong at 83 years old. Um, and she, she was the reason I moved to New York. Um, she said, you must come and study with Uta Hagen. And I went, oh, I just want to go study with you. And she said, don't be foolish. <laughs> come and be, get in Uta Hagen's class. And yes, you can study with me too. So I was working with Carol, invited to teach, uh, co-teach with her at her side. And um, it was thrilling and I was very nervous and, um, and so after the first day, I, we met afterwards to talk about how it went. And I said, I, I had the, uh, uh, there was a moment in the class where I, I, really, I thought, I need to give this actor um, something that is not, I didn't learn from Uta Hagen that I learned in the Meissner technique, but I decided not to because this is a class about teaching to teach the Hagen technique. And she said, Oh, never deny your impulse again. If that's what you have to offer, go for it. In this space, there's no religion. There's no sticking to the cult of Uta Hagen. If there's something that you think can be then benefit the actor that doesn't come so-called from the Hagen work, do it. And so um, I'm going to teach you the Meisner technique. Yes, as I understand it but I'm not gonna leave half of my toolbox uh, in the shed. I'm going to take, use whatever way I can to help you grow in the work. So that's my answer. Спасибо. Значит, нашим студентам очень повезет. Есть очень интересный вопрос из чата. Да, да. Задает вопрос Василиса. Она говорит, что она сама режиссер, ей интересно, поможет ли ей вот эта техника Майзнера, если она пойдет поучиться, лучше и глубже понимать актеров и работать с ними. And my experience as an actor has benefits me tremendously. I don't think you need to. I think there are directors who can communicate with actors just fine, but that's a, there's a talent to that, an understanding of human beings of how to get what it, what it is that you, your vision realized. Um, but certainly it's so, so smart of you uh, to, to put yourself out there and be an actor for a while. That's what this class is going to um, ask of you. Uh, and walk in the shoes of the actor. It's going to benefit the way you, you communicate with actors. Absolutely. Um, it's it's uh, good acting is invisible. Uh, the better it is, the less it looks like they're working. Um, and so if you do this work and realize how hard that is, to get to that point, how much actually effort goes into appearing effortless. Um, I think that's gonna, when you look through the lens, you're gonna see your, the human beings uh, that you're directing in a, in a different matter and with a greater respect. And it's just going to enrich you as an artist. I, I, I hope so, that is in my, my humble opinion. And it's not because of me, it's just because of you and, and your interest, the fact that you're interested enough in what the actor does to put yourself on the line like that. That's uh, admirable. Это здорово. Спасибо большое. Я с вами абсолютно согласна. Как как режиссер. Еще тут хороший вопрос от Алисы. Как вы считаете, Брайан, важно ли иметь талант или можно быть просто человеком, который с течением времени, с обучением может стать хорошим актером. И вообще есть ли такое понятие, как талант? И вот очень интересно ваше мнение. Yes. 
Yes. Yes, there is. You're born with it. It cannot be taught. Um, and it's because you, and it can't be measured. I, I never use the word talent uh, when I'm teaching um, because it's what you walk in with. Uh, I can't help you with it. And, and, and it really is based on a, a few things. Uta Hagen actually tries to define talent in the beginning of her book called The Challenge for the Actor. And I, I'll paraphrase, but it is a, um, a soaring imagination a, a um, uh, an ease and an availability to all the five physical senses, um, and um, and um, and a, a, a freedom of emotion. Uh, those are things you're 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 born with. You can study and train and heighten those natural gifts, those natural qualities by practice. Um, and it's also true, the most talented people are not always the ones that get the job. I have, I remember in theater school, there was the guy who was clearly more talented than anybody, including myself. It was humble to admit it, there it was, but he, he didn't have what it took uh, to um, to build a career or a strong, strong interest in improving or to, you know, and it, it just, it, you know, the, the most talented people aren't gonna be the ones that, that go get on top um, in the work. So you can make up for some, for that by hard work and dedication. I knew I wasn't the most talented person in my class, and uh, but I was stubborn, and I um, I wasn't going to just uh, quit, you know. <laughs> and and the train, my training made me a better actor. It, it it enhanced whatever talent I already had. That's my answer. And you'll never hear me say the word talent again. Хорошо, спасибо. Я думаю, что это очень смотивирует наших студентов, которые, может быть, где-то в чем-то сомневаются. На самом деле наша встреча уже скоро подойдет к концу. Давайте я задам, наверное, уже последний вопрос и очень важный именно по поводу вашей техники, ну, техники Майзнера. Смогут ли студенты после этого курса, да, после вот занятий разбирать роли самостоятельно? То есть они смогут забрать эти навыки и пойти дальше в мир? I, th I, I will put it this way. Um, you will have new tools in your toolbox to apply to the part. Uh, there will be at the very least, for me, whenever I get a part, um, uh, even after all these years, the, the first thing I feel is I don't know how to begin. Um, and that, it's it's so I'm so distant from from the character usually unless it's a character that I, I as soon as I read it I have a strong emotional connection to but nevertheless the work how do I begin the work where do I start what do I start with um, I then uh, turn to my toolbox and pull out the first tool that I my instinct tells me to use uh, and and I apply it and I read the play many times and I. I practice a lot, as much time as I can, and I uh, journal, and I, I just I do everything I can. And then pretty soon, I'm like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing here. I have a, I have specific tasks, uh, a specific, um, um, measurable. Uh, I know where to start. I know what to do, and so you're going to have more tools in your toolbox to so that when you begin with a new part. You'll, you'll have something, it, it might be, and, and it might be different for everyone. Um, your approach to learning lines uh, might 
shift because of this work. Um, you, how you conduct yourself at your first rehearsal, whether you, um, uh, whether you do improvisation, uh, whether you're working alone and you, uh, you think the, the independent activity is something worth exploring for the character um, to help you come closer to the character. Um, yes, um, eight weeks, not, not a long time. So you won't have the whole picture by any means, uh, but you'll have more tools. I can tell you that. Я поняла. Ну, супер, классно. Тогда на этой э, очень позитивной ноте и понимание того, что мы сможем это использовать в дальнейшем, я предлагаю уже завершить нашу встречу. Я благодарю участников за их вопросы. Я благодарю вас, что вы были с нами в этот вечер. Брайан, вам большое спасибо за замечательную встречу, за то, как вы были открыты, за то, как вы показывали этот стук в дверь. Это вообще было прекрасно. Вот, так что, ребята, подписывайтесь на наши соцсети, не пропускайте встречи. У нас будет еще несколько тоже с международными экспертами и авторами будущих программ. Вот, так что запись встречи мы пришлем в письме, если вдруг кто-то что-то хотел бы еще раз услышать. Спасибо вам большое. Брайан, спасибо. Всем спасибо и до новых встреч. Пока-пока. Спасибо. Все, пока-пока.